everyone and welcome back this is Denise and I have all kinds of goodies to share with you this week I got my sketch box that we need to open and a whole bunch of yummy things that I have collected up and just saved for my art haul uh, because I just love sharing fun stuff with you so I did the um, the video the other day on different white pins and such that I happen to have here in my studio and it was by all means not everything you know as I went about my day I would be like oh I have this thing in the white shoot I missed that um, but I had somebody comment on that white video that one of their favorite white pins is this um, Art Istro white paint pen set um, and they said it was extra white and they thought it was maybe even a little more of their favorite beyond the Posca pen. So I thought, oh, well, let's give these a try. Um, <laughs> as I just tear the box open because I don't know, some of these things just don't want to open for us when we're trying to open stuff. Um, here we go. So extra fine tip, white, Let's just take a look at this on something. I have got, um, I've got a little sketchbook here that I'm going to talk about in a second, but let's just try. Let's see, did we get it started? Let's get this started. And it's acrylic paint, so you definitely want to shake them up. Water-based ink well it's called acid-free non-toxic water-based ink so maybe it's ink instead of paint Ooh, okay so there we go got it started and we've got some little white dots here on a piece that I did last week and out of the two I would say the Posca was the other dot, and I just did this around the Posca dot, so I would say very comparable to the Posca. <laughs> but I am glad to have um, an extra option for white ink. So if you've tried the Posca and you're like, eh, maybe not my favorite, this might be another good um, option for you. So I thought, yay, white pens, let's give it a try. So that is one of the things I wanted to share with you. I also have an obsession with palettes, and so we're going to call this palette day. Um, but I got these yummy white palettes um, that I think m may be needing. I'm not positive, but I'll link them below. Um, but I got a couple of them because I like having tons of these around. And if you've been around my channel for any time, let me pull these down, um, then you'll have seen lots of random white ceramic plates or whatever it is that I have found and these are kitchen plates that I have gotten from TJ Maxx this is a little antique dish that came from the antique store these are little um, appetizers or dessert plates um, that came in like a set from the kitchen department in the TJ Maxx and they're relatively un inexpensive and for any of your water-based mediums like watercolor or gouache or anything um, like that that you can you know clean with water those are like the perfect little dishes and so I found these and I like these because the lip is really tiny and they're white and they're a good size and I thought Let's add those to my collection. <laughs> I need them. <laughs> Which, of course, I don't, but I wanted them anyway. <laughs> and I like watching art hauls on YouTube myself because I have a ridiculous obsession with buying art supplies. And it used to be two different hobbies. The making and the buying were two different hobbies. And finally, I have combined those hobbies into what I do now. So we'll call it all the same hobby. But I still love watching other people's art hauls and the things that they show off. And I'm thinking, huh, I need this or I need that. And so this is a soap dish <laughs> from Amazon comes in white or black but it was the perfect size for brushes that I saw 
uh, Margot Halleck show on her YouTube channel. So um, I'll try to remember to link that below, but she does uh, ballet things. Her channel's called Point Brush, I think, and most of the things that she paints and does centers around ballet. And they're beautiful and whimsical and lovely, and she's got lots of great tips on her channel. And I did not mention to her that I'd be, you know, showing something in my art hall with her channel, so I've never even reached out to her, but she seems really lovely, and her channel is fun to watch. And I loved this random soap dish holding your brushes idea. So I definitely will link those below because it's genius and check out her channel if you hadn't seen it because it's delightful. This is such a fun book. So this is One Color a Day, a daily art practice and visual diary by Cart Courtney Suruti, S-E-R-R-U-T-I, Suruti. Um, probably said that wrong sorry so this what I like about this is it's kind of a good way to play with color and color mixing and practicing and you can go for you know basically a whole year all the way to week 52 seven days a week try out a different mix date it put what that mix was and then you'll have a really cool reference of some of the weeks and things that you created um, once you're finished with this book. So it's got some little idea pages in here and it's got some ideas for, you know, where you come up with these color combinations and, and it's just a nice guide for somebody looking to just kind of up their game on color and color mixing and having reference photos for different things that you've done here with color. So that's a yummy little book. I like it. Okay, another little book. Oh my goodness. So one of our lovely viewers knows that I love collecting art books and stuff. And I believe she said she was a librarian. And when this new book came into their library, she immediately thought of me. And I looked at it and I'm like, oh my goodness, yes, that's totally a me book. So this is The Pigment Trail by Deborah Luker. And it's inspiration from the colors and textures of the people of India. And, you know, some of the... Um, books that I have from uh, Sibylla Court really remind me of this because some of those are very um, Indian and influenced with the colors and the textures and the patterns and the books and um, this is a brand new book that just came out in early 2024 and it's about the artist's um, trips through India and the art and things that she created while she was there and it's just a very beautiful colorful, visually inspiring book to just kind of sit on the porch and soak in, like get yourself some tea and sit outside and just soak in all of the beautiful details and the colors. I can see some color palette challenges that could come out of this where you're like, oh, I love this. Let me see what I can create in these sets of colors and such. And they're just beautiful. So this is a, a book that I definitely wanted to share with you and thank you to the lovely lady that shared that with me because I have already sat out twice with this book just kind of soaking it in because it's too much to soak it all in in one go. It's not a lot of reading. Um, it's just little corpse in here of of her thoughts and where she was and stuff like that it is mostly visual which I gotta tell you is just oh just makes me so happy looking again at the different things in here they're so beautiful so definitely check this book out check your library if you don't want to purchase it but this was a very inspiring book to me the pigment trail so I thought I would share that with you and you know, I have that great big ruler. My, I call it my rip ruler. Where we rip the edges of paper to get the pretty torn edges. And mine is the dual edge ripper. Um, like you can see it, there we go. Um, it's the dual edge ripper and it's, it's pretty big. It's a large 
Lucite ruler um, that I love. I pull it out a lot. And I happened to come across a metal rip ruler here on, uh, I think it was on Amazon. And there are actually several different edges on these rulers. Um, I just happened to grab one that I liked this edge. And that edge is kind of choppy. It's going to be interesting to see what that does. Um, so it's a metal rip ruler, stainless steel. I don't see the name on it, but I'll definitely link it below. Um, but yeah, you know, if you don't want a big, gigantic two foot rip ruler, little metal rip rulers are out there and available. And of course, I keep a regular straight rip ruler, uh, regular ruler here because you can tear on a regular ruler too. But I like the edges that you get on the rip rulers. They're a little more hand torn, they're larger, and they look a little more on purpose. Um, so I'm kind of excited to give this one a try. So definitely check out some little metal rip rulers. Okay, let's go back to the palettes. So I placed an order from the Happiness Studio. It was a random account that came up. Let's see if they, these are just all little postcards, I guess, that came with it. But I saw a random post on Instagram and I'm like, whoa, what is that? And I think it was this one because of the shape. Um, and so I clicked on it and it was a ceramic artist doing some paintings with the most beautiful little handmade ceramic palettes. I love it. Um, this is Happiness Studio is her name. This is happinessstudio.com is their website. And it looks like on these, I, I did the pre-order where you could order it and took about six weeks and then they came uh, in the mail. So they were made to order when she opened up the orders for these. Um, so I got this one and this one. <gasps> Look at that. I love this lovely flower shape. It's a really common shape that a lot of people use um, in the plain white that, that's out there. And this one's just so lovely and more creative um, that I was like, I need these in my collection. I swear I've got like probably 30 palettes of different lovely things that I've collected through the years. Um, but these were super original and thoughtful. And I thought, how lovely. I'm definitely adding those to my collection. And if you didn't see the video I did on a little collaboration that I did with Masha's watercolors, um, I'm just going to show those off too in this haul because they're still brand new to me. <laughs> Look at this one. Masha is a uh, makes the handmade watercolors that are like probably my most favorite watercolors of everything. And then she's a ceramic artist on top of that. And this is like such a beautiful flower rose kind of palette um, along with a brush holder with this lovely iridescent glaze on it. Look how creative that is. Like totally unexpected and gorgeous. And you know, very easy to use these little holders on your table to keep your brush lifted off the table if you've got paint on it and such. Um, or water, you're just sitting them there to dry love these. These are probably the most creative um, with the watercolors and her watercolors are my favorite. And talking about her watercolors, we also did, which if you didn't see that video um, where I showed those, um, we did a little collaboration set of 20 quarter pans of her watercolors in my favorites of hers. So these are still wet because I've been using them. Um, but I got to pick out a whole collection of 20 out of her watercolors. You know I love her watercolors because I have multiple sets. This was a one that I had gotten um, of the little essential colors. And I love that they're ceramic palettes that are so creative. And once you use all the watercolor in it, you have the palette left over. <laughs> so of course I'm going to like that. And I had gotten her little 36 color sampler set that I just went crazy over because then I could test out more colors and I could be like, ooh, it's my favorite. And I got to go through and pick out my favorites. And then we did a little collaboration set of my favorite colors. So this is the 20 quarter pan Denise Love favorite colors set. Um, so if they're not sold out yet, these are super limited uh, edition. 
and when they're gone they're gone um, but I thought it was so lovely to get to do a little collaboration and have my 20 favorite colors as a set so definitely check out Masha's watercolors if you are interested in this set or any of her watercolors because they do change out you just have to kind of look and see what's popped up on her thing I kind of I kind of stalk her site <laughs> looking at what's new on here and these this is gorgeous i already have one of her other watercolor palettes um, because i was like wow most creative palette i think i've ever seen and i loved the leaves and i could put my wet uh, tube watercolors in here if i wanted a special palette of maybe my favorite daniel smith watercolors i could put those in there and that could be a daniel smith palette or what have you um, i'm using it currently for photo prop because i like pretty little palettes sitting next to uh, finished pieces and my photos but man so much you can do with these uh, so i hope you like our little palette round up here the happiness studio ones are super fun these were my Masha watercolors, that little sketchbook that I did of the Masha's colors. Look how beautiful they are. And what I really love about them is they're granulating and they separate out into amazing combinations um, as you're painting. And so I like watercolors that do tricks and those are like the trickiest of the watercolors and all the pretty things that they do. Um, they granulate beautifully. They bloom out pretty if you drip a drop of water in them. They just do all kinds of beautiful things. And so I've had a good time playing with all the colors here in one of my little sketchbooks. So now this is a Masha's watercolor sketchbook backgrounds that I can go and then add marks to later. I can tote this around with a few pens and have some art that I can create. Um, and I love having a fun little book to do that. Um, so definitely check out this collaboration set if it's not sold out because um, these are super fun. <laughs> I love art haul day. Um, so this is, and I haven't even opened it, here's the stencil club stencils. And I do love getting random stencils and art supplies so this was right up my alley so this is the february stencils for 2024 that just came in that i hadn't gotten into yet um so look at that this is basically two stencils because i can see the divider and that's really cool and kind of organic -y, but this look at that right there Oh, I love this one. That one's great. Three of 2024. So yeah, it's the March set. I just got these. It's the March set. And I'm filming this at the end of March. <laughs> and then this one, we've got four different stencils. And we've got leaves. And I don't know, something kind of organic. And we've got what kind of looks like palm trees or trees. And then this one is a yummy can't think of the word for that <laughs> what what is this word I can't think of it I get on camera and then I start my mind goes blank um, so anyway yummy pattern here on this one too so these are good I think I'm gonna enjoy these I especially like this top part of that one so there we go stencil club for March let me set those to the side because we also have the sketch box okay so let's just see what came this month I haven't even peeked i didn't even peek nobody's told me what it was this is the april sketch box it came a tiny bit early because uh maybe because it's good friday and, and easter so it did come a little tiny bit early but probably when i'm posting this it's a little further out uh, just because i scheduled these videos out okay Here's everything in the box. So what did we get? Look at that. This is the premium purple pan pastel box. Okay, so we've got some medium tooth deep black color fix paper. So I'm assuming it's a pastel paper. Huh, these used to be postcards. Here we go. Yeah, it's a pastel paper, deep black, four by nine, six sheets, 230 pound. Fine textured surface is the perfect for a variety of dry mediums such as soft pastels, charcoal, pencils. Its slight tooth helps pastels adhere to the paper and create seamless blends. Cool. 
All right, so then we also have some pastel applicators. We also have a couple of pastel pencils by Faber-Castell. Postcard, and we got some pan pastels. Let's see what we got. I like pan pastels. I don't. I got to kind of go in and out of wanting to use these and and them living in my drawer. But I think I've got most of the colors. Look at that color. Okay, I feel like <gasps> look at that color. All right, good ones. And the pan pastels come with some applicators, so we got lots of applicators today too. So I feel like we should be creating. A little pastel um, abstract <laughs> because that is weirdly enough there's no paint or any other art things that I got today how funny is that it's all mostly hard surface stuff and uh, white okay so let's just do this and you know with pastels you got to be careful with pastel paper you don't want to necessarily um, looking for my tape let me find the tape hang on all right I found the tape don't ask me where it was hiding I just found a different tape <laughs> but what I do is I will tape along the back side of a piece of pastel paper because you can't really tape I mean maybe you can but that's just years ago that's not the way I learned how to do it so I tape the back side because it's basically sandpaper, you know, on the uh, front side. So, well, stick to my paper tape. <laughs> but it's basically a sandpaper. So I tape the back side and then I will tape down the tape and kind of keep the paper free. So you're kind of going up to the edge, but then you're still able to tape it down and work your piece um, without taping the actual paper itself. And everybody might do this different. This is just the way I learned a while back. And then it's kind of taped down. And then let's see what we got here. I don't pull out my pastels too much, but they are fun. And I'm just going to use the applicator that's in here and maybe create an abstract something. And I'm going to create kind of in the same way as I just make a mess there. But I'm going to create kind of in the same way that I paint and do some maybe some abstract designs or patterns or something like that and just go from there. Um, you could, you know, get real specific and draw something on here, like an animal or an owl or whatever it is that, you know, you're wanting to create and go from there. Um, I'm just testing out here today and we're just seeing what, what these do. And I think the pastel paper that I normally have is like pastel matte and I've done, uh, a fun pastel class. There's several artists that do pastel classes out there. I have people that are like, you should do a pastel class or you should do this. But I don't know, sometimes you got to wait till that little inspiration comes to you. So this is the perfect time to have little microfiber cleaning cloths available and you can just clean the dust off of that and keep on using it. Um, another little trick I had learned in a class I had taken And, you know, basically you just use these like brushes, these little makeup applicator look like, looks like eyeshadow applicator kind of thing. Um, but yeah, you can basically draw and paint um, with these little applicators. And I'm just going to create like a little abstract, but you just clean these out on the cloth and then just go right on into the next thing that you're kind of thinking you want to do.
and I try not to blow. I'm sitting here about to blow on it, but generally what you do with pastels is you don't blow on them. You, I usually get a piece of my wax paper or something else like that that I can, or a towel, a wet towel is good, and you can tap off the powder so that you're not sucking it in and blowing it out. And if you get pastel where you didn't want it, you could probably take a little eraser and erase it off pretty easy. Um, this is my high polymer soft eraser. And then we could come back in here and draw shapes and patterns and whatever it is that you, know, you want to add to your piece. with the pastel pencils. And I like pastel pencils. I have a, a big box of those. So these are, these are fun to use and try and play with and get nice tight lines and more details. You could use your pen pastel for like color blocking and then pastel pencils for um, details and marks and other things that you want to add to your piece. All right, super fun. That was actually, these were actually really easy to use. So these were the Faber-Castell pastel pencils, which I'm not sure I have these. I think I have the Carbon Thellos. Um, so that was kind of nice trying that out and just kind of coming up with a very quick little abstract that I can now just pick right up off of my tape. You see how easy that makes that to pick up and then do something else with. And then I can trim these down to whatever I created. So that's super fun. All right, so I hope you enjoyed checking out this amazing art haul that we had this month. And I can't wait to see what you guys are creating. I'll try to link everything below. I hope I didn't miss anything. And I will talk to you guys next month.